Let me guess how your first night with a telescope went. You set everything up, pointed it at the sky, tried to find something obvious, and mostly saw nothing at all. And at some point, you probably thought, I must be doing this wrong. The truth is, that first night usually fails for reasons that nobody tells you about. In this video, I'll show you why that experience is so common and how to make your next night calmer, clearer, and more rewarding without changing your equipment, right here on Night Sky Voyager. Maybe you've just received your first telescope, which means you might be taking it out for the very first time. For most people, that first night can feel confusing, difficult, or underwhelming. Let me start by being very clear. You did not do anything wrong. Most beginners assume they're failing, bought the wrong equipment, or weren't prepared enough. But visual astronomy is very rewarding, and early on, it doesn't give you much feedback about what you're doing right. There are also a few invisible constraints that nobody really explains ahead of time. Today, I want to explain why that first night so often feels like a failure. Reframe what's actually happening and help your next night feel different without changing your equipment. If you're new here, this channel is all about making visual astronomy feel approachable, especially at the eyepiece. One of the first challenges you'll face on your first night out is simply locating objects. I still remember my first night out with a telescope. I'd read the manual, set everything up, driven out to a dark park, and then I looked up and thought, now what? It's an intimidating moment. And once you do pick a target, let's say the moon or a planet, actually finding it can feel impossible. The telescope gives you no feedback. Being slightly off target feels exactly the same as being completely off. You see nothing. Small movements can turn into big jumps, and beginner mounts often add wobble or make fine adjustments difficult. So instead of learning through trial and error, frustration sets in and confidence drops fast. I see this all the time at public outreach events. Enthusiasm fades quickly when people assume there's some massive learning curve or that they're just incapable. But difficulty locating objects is completely normal, even for experienced observers. This isn't a skill problem, it's a feedback problem. A few simple things can make your next night go much smoother. Remember that your night starts before you ever take the telescope outside. Spend a few minutes looking at a star chart. Even something simple like the free monthly charts at skymaps.com, linked below. And pick one or two objects that will be visible that evening at your location. Also, make sure your finder scope is aligned with the main telescope during the daylight. And is reasonably precise. That alone can make the difference between feeling totally lost and getting very close on your first try. Another good starting point is to always begin with your lowest magnification eyepiece. That's usually the one with the biggest number printed on it. A wider field of view is like zooming out on a map. It's much easier to find the city before you zoom in on the street. Another major challenge on the first night is light pollution specifically how it affects your ability to locate objects. Most beginner advice assumes you can see enough stars in the constellations to use them as reference points. Under light polluted skies, many of those stars simply aren't visible. The result is that otherwise good instructions fail silently because the map that you're supposed to be using just isn't there. Light pollution comes in two forms. Natural light pollution includes waiting for the sky to get fully dark, but also the phase of the moon. Anything beyond a thin crescent can wash out large portions of the sky and many pointer stars. Man-made light pollution does the same thing by brightening the background sky and reducing contrast. Matching your targets to your conditions makes a huge difference. 
The moon and planets are great early targets because light pollution has very little effect on them. They're so bright that you can even observe them from urban locations. If you're hunting deep sky objects like nebula or galaxies, you'll need to be more aware of the moon phase and when it rises and sets. And you'll benefit from observing from darker skies when possible. And if an instruction mentions stars that you simply can't see because of your conditions, stop and change targets. That's not giving up. It's adapting to your sky. If this kind of explanation is helpful, I make a lot of videos focused on visual astronomy and helping beginners get past these early frustrations. The third reason the first night often feels like a failure is that many beginners are judging what they see against the wrong standard. Most of us come into this hobby having seen incredible images online. Bright colors, sharp detail, dramatic structure. So it's natural to expect something similar when you finally look through a telescope eyepiece for yourself. The reality is that visual astronomy is a very different experience. Objects like the Orion Nebula or Andromeda Galaxy don't look like the photos, especially from a light polluted sky. They're often faint, subtle, and mostly gray. When you're not expecting that, it's easy to assume something went wrong. And I'm using the word experience intentionally. Visual astronomy isn't just about the view. It's the process of choosing a target, locating it, and spending time with it. When all of that comes together, it can be incredibly rewarding. A simple way to make your next night better is to redefine what success means early on. Early success isn't about being impressed. It's about recognition, knowing what you're looking at, identifying its shape or structure, and confirming that you've actually found it. Over time, you'll naturally train yourself to notice more detail. There's something special about taking the time to really sit with an object instead of rushing past it. Staying on a single target longer than you think you need to can make a big difference. If you're ready to take the next step and start thinking about how you actually engage with what you're seeing, I have a full video on eyepieces that builds directly on this. Not strictly from a gear perspective, but from how they shape the observing experience. Check the card up in the corner. When you put all of this together, it starts to make sense why your first night out so often feels like a failure. You're trying to aim an instrument that gives you very little feedback under a sky that may not give you the reference points most advice assumes you have, while judging the experience against a standard that was never meant to apply at the eyepiece. Any one of those is manageable, but all three at once can be overwhelming. None of them mean you did anything wrong, and none of them mean this hobby isn't for you. They're simply part of the early learning curve that nobody really explains. If you approach your next night with slower expectations, simpler targets, and a clearer idea of what success actually looks like, the experience usually feels very different. Not perfect, but calmer, more intentional, and more rewarding. The goal isn't to see everything. It's to see something you didn't see last time. Because that first night isn't supposed to be magical. It's supposed to be the beginning.